Hello National Five Historians and welcome to this presentation which is another part of your inquiry skills for the exam. So again just another reminder you have six different types of questions divided into two different groups so you've got knowledge and understanding questions also we have a describe which is worth four marks and explain which is worth six marks and a mini essay which is worth nine marks you then have your source handling questions a source comparison which is worth four marks and evaluate the usefulness question which is worth five marks and a how food question which is worth six marks now today our focus is going to be on a source comparison question which you can see on the line there which is worth four marks and again your Disney mascots we are now for the source comparison question using Pumba and Timon as your source comparison mascots. Now our aim is by the end of this presentation for the comparison question. We are aiming to know how to answer a source comparison question. We should have went over a couple of examples of the class and then glued a template into our jotters. Now again, if you've not got access to the template, then you can always just copy this into your jotters. Now, key information for a source comparison question. A source comparison question is worth four marks. Now, the purpose of the question is to compare two sources that you'll be given and decide if they agree or disagree. Now, they will either completely agree or disagree, they won't do both, so don't get mixed up in your question when you're trying to say maybe they agree about this but they disagree about this, they'll either agree or disagree. Now in the exam there will be two source comparison questions, one of them will agree and the other one will disagree. Now where do you get the four marks for a source comparison question? You get one mark for an overall comparison, so you state if the sources agree or disagree about the topic. You then get one mark for a simple comparison where you state what in particular the sources agree or disagree on and you can then get another mark for a developed comparison where you give the quotes to match this statement. Now how do we answer this question? There's three simple steps to answering this question. Now step number one is your overall comparison which you can get a mark for. So we're going to say overall sources A and B they will either agree or they will disagree about then you just use the wording of the question. That gets you a mark so that's step one. Step two you're then going to say really finding a point about what the sources agree or disagree on. So you would say the sources agree slash disagree about, so you state what they agree or disagree about, and then step three you find the quotes to match this. So after you've said what they agree or disagree about and you've put a full stop, you would then say as source A states and you put a quote from the source, and source B agrees slash disagrees when it states and you put a quote from the source. Now the next part of this, once you've done step one, step two and step three, you then repeat step two and three. So your final answer should look like an overall comparison and then two detailed comparisons ultimately. Now here is a few examples that we're just going to go over as a class. So firstly we're going to look at one out of context of history, we're going to look at on the town of Karimur. So sources B and C are about the town of Karimur. So you'll see here it says source B. Kirimur is a town in Angus near Forfar. It has a long and interesting history and records show strong links between the town and Peter Pan. The town itself is in a rural setting and is very close to many excellent walks. Kirimur has lots of local shops. It also has a high school which caters for people from Kirimur and the surrounding area. So C. Many people will have heard of Kirimur. The creator of Peter Pan was born in the town. It has one high school called Webster's High School. Many people who live in Kirimur work in the local area. It is also close to other well-known places including Forfar. There is also a high school in Forfar which has recently moved to a new building. And your question is, compare the views of sources B and C about the town of Kirimur. Compare the sources overall and or in detail. So it's worth four marks. Now how we answer this here, here's just an example. So we have our overall comparison to start. So step number one, where we have said, overall sources B and C agree about the town of Kirimur. So that gets you a mark, that's your overall comparison there. You're then looking to find out what the sources agree or disagree on. So the sources agree about the town being close to Forfar. There's one mark for a simple comparison. We now need to find the quotes to match that. As source B states, Kirimur is a town in Angus near Forfar. And source C agrees when it states it is also close to other well-known places including Forfar. So you found the two sources there, the two quotes, sorry, from each source which agree with each other. The sources also agree about the town having strong links to Peter Pan. So there's another mark. As source B states, it has a long interest in history and records show strong links between the town and Peter Pan. And source C agrees when it states the creator of Peter Pan was born in the town. And then your last point, the sources also agree about the town having a high school. As source B states, it also has a high school which caters for pupils from Kirimur and the surrounding area. And source C agrees when it states it has one high school called Webster's High School. So you should see there how we've got the overall comparison at the start. 
what you're saying if the sources agree or disagree. We've then got what the sources agree about and we've got the quotes to match for your points there. Now, you'll see in total for this example, we have done three comparisons there about what the sources agree on. So about it being close to the town of Forfar, about it having strong likes to Peter Pan and about having a high school. Now, you would only need to do that twice. So you only need to find two detailed comparisons but that's just an example there will always be three comparisons for you available to use you only need to use two now here's another example related to history so from the actual exam so it's also being here about the post-war decline of scotland's heavy industry so this is from the scottish section the world war one topic so it says, source B, after the war there was a slump in international trade, this and the adoption of new production methods combined to worsen the problems of Scottish heavy industries. During the 1920s, employment in Scottish shipbuilding and its associated industries fell. In the face of foreign competition, some of Scotland's shipyards had to close. The coal industry employed one third fewer people in the 1920s than before the war as other countries could produce coal more cheaply. And source C says, shipbuilding was the most important industry in Scotland and thousands of jobs depended on it. Many shipyards had to close because of foreign competition. Government spending on ships was cut to save money. Jobs were also lost in all of the industries that provided materials for the shipyards, iron, steel and coal. Coal mine declined because other countries could produce coal more efficiently. New sources of energy such as electricity also meant less demand for coal. So your question here, compare the views of sources B and C about the post-war decline of Scotland's heavy industries. Compare the sources overall and or in detail. So again, it's worth four marks. So we look at this source here. Below you'll see points highlighted that ultimately match up, that agree with each other. So overall the sources do agree with each other. Now the key thing to remember here is when you answer this in the exam, it's good to use highlighters here so you could highlight points that they agree or disagree on. So we know from looking at this that overall they agree with each other and we found points there that they agree on. So now your answer, what your answer would look like for this question. So step number one, overall sources B and C agree about the post-war decline of Scotland's heavy industries. There's one mark. The sources agree about employment falling in shipbuilding and its associated industries. There's another mark. A source B states, during the 1920s, employment in Scottish shipbuilding and its associated industries fell. And source C agrees when it states, jobs are also lost in all of the industries that provided materials for the shipyards, iron, steel and coal. So there's another mark. We've then got the sources also agree about shipyards closing due to foreign competition. So there's one mark. As source B states, in the face of foreign competition, some of Scotland's shipyards had to close, and source C agrees when it states, many shipyards had to close because of foreign competition. So there's another mark. And again, we've done this again at the end, but obviously, for just those two comparisons there, that would be enough to get your four marks. The sources also agree about coal mining suffering after the war. As source B states, the coal industry employed one third fewer people in the 1920s than before the war, as other countries could produce coal more cheaply. And source C agrees when it states, coal mine declined because other countries could produce coal more efficiently. So there's another mark there. Now, another key thing to remember here when you're answering this question, do not cut your quotes short. Make sure that you put the full quote from the source to guarantee yourself the mark. Okay, now here's another example. So. It says, sources C and D are about the effect of the French Revolution on the abolition of the slave trade. So this is from one of our British topics, which is the Atlantic slave trade. So we have here, source C, the French Revolution had a damaging effect on the abolition of the slave trade. The violence of the execution of King Louis terrified those in power. Britain needed money to pay for the war with France and as a result could not risk the abolition of this wealthy trade. Tactics such as presenting abolition bills to Parliament were now seen to be too unpatriotic, so many abolitionists adopted other tactics. And Source D says the abolitionists remained active during the French Revolution. The cause of the French was similar to that of the abolitionists. Some argued that slavery did not contribute as much to paying for the war as other more profitable trades did. Abolitionists such as William Wilberforce continued to introduce bills against the trade in the House of Commons. Therefore, events in France had a positive effect on the abolition of the slave trade. So compare the views of sources C and D about the effect of the French Revolution on the abolition of the slave trade. Now, we've just looked at an example which the sources agreed. For this... If you have a look over this from what we've just read there, you should know and have found out that these sources actually disagree with each other. So what our answer would look like for this? We have points highlighted here where the sources disagree with each other. So again, if you were using highlighters, you'd find points where they disagree and they are highlighted there. Here is our answer. Overall, sources C and D disagree about the effect of the French Revolution on the abolition of the slave trade. So there's one mark. The sources disagree about the French Revolution having a positive effect on the abolition. As source C states, the French Revolution had a damage effect on the abolition of the slave trade, and source D 
This series when it states events in France had a positive effect on the abolition of the slave trade. So there's another mark there. The sources also disagree about whether the slave trade was needed to fight a war with France. As source C states, Britain needed money to pay for the war with France and as a result could not risk the abolition of this wealthy trade. And source D disagrees when it states, some argued that slavery did not contribute as much to paying for the war as other more profitable trades did. Again, that would be enough up to that point for our four marks. But there will always be up to three comparisons that you can use in these two sources. So the last one that you could possibly use is the sources also disagree about the tactics abolitionists continued to use. As source C states, tactics such as presenting abolition bills to Parliament were now seen to be too unpatriotic, so many abolitionists adopted other tactics. And source D disagrees when it states, abolitionists such as William Wilberforce continue to introduce bills against the trade in the House of Commons. So that's an example there of sources that disagree with each other. So the template to go into your jotter, again, if you've not got a physical copy of this, a hard copy of this, you can just write this down your jotter. Three simple steps, so if you remember step one, Overall comparison, overall sources A and B agree or disagree about, and just use the one of the question. Step two, find points from the source that they agree or disagree on, so the sources agree slash disagree about, and remember to put a full stop once you've said what they agree or disagree about. And then step three, find your quotes to match this, as source A states, and you have a quote from the source, and source B agrees or disagrees when it states, and you have a quote from the source. And remember, you're just re then repeating step two and three. So that is how you answer a source comparison question. So just to go back, have we met our aims with Pimba and Timon today? We should now know how to answer a source comparison question. If you're still not sure, make sure you look back over this presentation. We should have went over some examples as a class, which we have done. We went over one on Kerry Muir, we went over one on Scotland's industries, and we went over one on the abolition of the slave trade. And the last point there, glue the template into our jotters or have copied down the template. Thank you.